And so one of the things I wanted to do with the, the exploration of gin was to break it down so that we could take anything and make it into a gin. Because the way it's classically taught is you have these specific movements, you have your ward off, which gives you the Pong Jin. Well, Pong Jin can be found in any movement. Pong Jin is an expanding up and out kind of yang energy. You can and should be able to find that in any posture and any movement. And if we think about it as, oh, if I copy these movements, then I will get the magic. No, you're not going to get the magic. It's what, what is inside it. And that takes us to the real alchemy in this. So you can repeat the formula ah, of energy directed by consciousness, especially the body, and still not have gin because there's, there's a missing ingredient there, and that is meeting. Meeting, and I talk about this a lot in uh, finding you in a world of it, but meeting is where I encounter, I participate in life in the present moment. And there are three components to, to meeting. One is, you need to be in a state of wholeness. That is, you got to get your shit together. You have to be able to be a whole person to do that. If your mind is darting all over the place, then you are fragmented by your, your intellect. To be able to be whole, you have to bring your mind in alignment with your body. And when that happens, then something really miraculous happens is that your spirit or Shen awakens. And now we, we're, in, we're using a different part of our brain when we do that. That is, we are in the, we're not using the it mind, that which is the mind that, that thinks about stuff, that memorizes stuff, that says, what do I do next? That, that's the it mind, and it puts things into categories and helps us to remember things. But whenever I am in a state of wholeness, then my body and mind are integrated. And I'm using, as I say, a different part of the brain that I'm not localized in the it mind, the part of the brain that actually is doing all the computations and symbolic logic but it actually moves to much more of, of what is available to you when it awakens your senses. You know, your, the doors of perception are cleansed. And you get to see, as Blake said, you get to see the world as it is, infinite. And um, that's when we wake up. We wake up and we move into the present moment. So that's the second component. Coherence is where we, we get the body mind integrated awake and that wholeness that generated awakens the spirit. And then we presence. And presence is not just a passive thing. It's not just being in the room. It is a decision to occupy space and time. That is to choose to be where you are uh, while you're doing it. You're, you're here now, you're saying this place, this time, here I am. And that is uh, directly affects your ability to create Jin. There is a a direct correlation between the, your effective power and your ability to do anything and how much you are willing to occupy space and time. How much you're willing to do, as Ram Dass reminded us, be here now. So we, to be able to consciously choose to be in this moment, not thinking about the moment, 
not telling myself a story about the moment, but actually being in the moment. To that extent, if I'm in a state of wholeness and I am present, then I have two of the three qualities that are needed for meeting. And the third one is the ability to relate or to resonate with something that is not me. Something where I'm able to extend out from this system that I occupy to something that is not me, be it uh, another human, an animal, a tree, a rock, whatever. That meeting is means that I'm able to go into resonance with it. And then cool stuff happens. You can even resonate with insubstantial stuff other, you can resonate with, with your dead mother, you can resonate and, and I do, but the, you know, that meeting can extend to anything that you can, you can create as a, an opposition terminal in, in that, you know, a, a negative pole to your, to your positive, then you're able to meet. And that is an extension from me out. So, and, and hence, all communication is is it follows that same formula that is goes from me and it's extended across a distance to some something that is not me so this is what where we get to the the active ingredient in jin is the meeting so i have to be able to get into present moment i have to be feel coherent or in a state of wholeness and I have to be able to extend out to something that is not me and be able to encounter that. And it can be something as substantial as a wall or a boulder, or it can be something as insubstantial as the air or space or even light, thought. So, we can, we can meet any of these things provided we can create enough of a relationship to that thing to be able to generate that. So what we we're talking about last week, one way of checking yourself, because it's easy to do if you got someone there, if Rick is there to grab you by the wrist and say, okay, you know, no, that's not Jen. No, that's not it. That's not it. Ah, there you go. You know, and then, and, uh, but if Rick's not there, how do, how do you be able to self correct? How do you, are you able to, to determine that? And one thing that I suggested last week, and, and that is that you just grab yourself and as you're extending outward, and you can, if I push out and I'm resisting with my other hand, so we now have a relationship. We have this hand and this hand, and I've decided that they are two different things, even though they're part of my body. They are by my decision, my, yeah, I've, I've created that. So now I'm reaching out and I can feel the tension in my shoulder. I say, ah, not gin. That's crude muscular force. But if I set up all the conditions I need to, I get, coherent. I point my finger, I reach with my elbow, I get my three pillars in, and then I reach out and fill. That is, I encounter the hand that is with my wrist. I reach with my wrist, I encounter that, and I allow myself to merge with the thing that's holding me back. And then, oh, suddenly the effortless power that is Jin magically appears. So that meeting is the, the philosopher's stone of this alchemy. It is what makes it work. And without it, you can practice a lifetime and never get there uh, you know, up to speed. So that, that's good. So the, uh, uh, bringing that capacity to meet to your movements 
is what is required in order to make it new each time you do it. That you're encountering this motion as if you're meeting it for the first time. And so if you find, oh yeah, I've done that before. Yeah, yeah, we do that. We do that in class all the time. Then it's a, uh, that's an algorithm. That's, that's just, you know, a set of instructions that your mind has memorized to, to do these things. And you're playing off of an old memory at that point. And even if you can replicate the motion, you, there's no gin there. There's no, no life and there's no presence. So its effectiveness is very limited. Its effectiveness is basically whatever you can create with your muscles, which means we're no longer in the gin category, we're in the Lee category. 